Hey, what's up guys? My name is Achena and welcome to episode 109 of Game Programming. I know it's been forever, but I've been swamped down with university assignments and I uh, just didn't have time to make any episodes. But, but today I decided to and the reason is, apart from that it's been a long time, is because the first episode of Game Programming hit 200,000 views recently uh, and 5,000 likes and I hit 28,000 subscribers today. So I thought, you know what, it's probably time to actually continue this YouTube thing. So here we are um, and today we're going to talk about uh, continuing to draw our font, because we didn't do that last time. Now, uh, you, if you guys were watching the previous episodes, which of course I recommend that you do if you're watching this one now, um, we started doing a font sheet, we actually finished the font sheet, well, I think I did that outside of the episode, but, um, we, we made this font sheet and we're gonna actually render it onto the screen, that's our goal. So if we run the game right now, uh, it looks pretty much the same as it always did, uh, did. you can shoot, you can, there are mobs everywhere, whatever. But we want to actually be able to render text onto the screen. Okay, that's our goal right now. Now, um, one of the things uh, that we have to do, right, is expand this font class that we've got to incorporate some kind of rendering capability um, and to actually render the characters that we've loaded. Okay, I know it's been a while, so I might just go over this code just a bit. What we did is we made a split method. This is like a previously kind of thing. But what we did is what well, what we did is we made like a split method here that you guys can see, um, and essentially what this does is it splits up a sprite sheet into uh, X amount of sprites, okay? Uh, and then returns them as an array. Uh, and then over here in sprite sheet, uh, I don't think we did anything in sprite sheet, nope. Okay, and then um, over here in font, uh, in game, just to check that it works, we instantiated the class so that these static fields would actually be instantiated and it gave us no errors, okay? And if you actually look at the console, I think uh, it loaded the aerial PNG. I actually changed the name of that because it was um, just real, okay? If you're on that, of course, it'll uh, do failed because we did add, we did add that error uh, checking functionality last time. Uh, but we'll, we'll change it back to Arial, of course, because that is the name of this uh, PNG file, okay, that we've got. Okay, fantastic. So let's get this onto the screen now. Um, this is actually a pretty cool little thing that's going on here that you guys are not aware of. But we're, we're, I'm just going to uh, show you guys this in a minute. But the idea is, let's focus on how to actually make the font class render things, okay? Uh, it's pretty simple, all right? We actually have in our screen class, remember screen is our rendering class, right? Screen is the class that has the pixels that will eventually be put onto our window, okay? Onto our screen. So whatever we actually want to physically manipulate pixels on the screen, we use the screen class for, okay? So clearly it's going to have, it's going to play a role in this. Now, I thought about making a render font or render character, kind of um, like render letter, render number, but altogether render character, not like a character, like a mob, but a character, like a letter or number. Uh, I thought about making a render character method, but you know what? I don't think we need to because we've already got this uh, render sprite method, okay? Um, one of the things this render sprite method does not do is do any kind of alpha checking, okay? And what I mean by that is the fake alpha that we've got going on, where pink, basically, we just don't render. Uh, so we might have to add that in somehow, but let's actually focus on getting the letters onto the screen uh, with the pink stuff, okay, just for now. So, we'll make a public void render, okay, and all we'll type in right now is screen screen, okay? That's it, I'm going to keep this really simple. Um, and then, we'll just I guess we'll just type in screen dot render sprite, okay, where we want it, let's just say 50-50. The sprite that we'll render for now will be the first character, so character 0, okay, sorry, character 0, referring to this array of sprites, of course. Uh, so we're rendering the first sprite in the array, which should be the letter A, all right, and fixed, we'll set the equal to false. That means that it will be floating around, so it'll actually be at 50-50, not 50-50 the level, but 50-50 on our screen, okay. Now, uh, we don't want font here, okay, we want font out here. Now, very, very important that you don't leave it like this, okay? Do not instantiate this as a field right here, okay? It will not work. In fact, I'll prove it to you because I think a few people were asking me this. If I run this right now, we'll get a crash, okay? And if we look at it, it'll be a null pointer exception. And what will actually happen is if we trace this down a bit, I'm sorry this uh, work area is a bit, <clears throat> bit small, but somewhere in sprite sheet, for example, yeah, we'll have all this stuff, and you can say, oh, play it down, we instantiate that to play, but hang on a minute, hover your mouse over it, oh, it's null. Why is it null? Because we haven't actually instantiated these fields yet, okay? You have to not do it this way, okay? It will not work this way. Because note that when we launch it this way, right, what actually happens is if we, if we trace this back all the way down, that code, 
this font font equals new font wherever that here it is this font font equals new font will run when we actually create a new game instance okay that's when it will get called that's before we've even created our thread or started our game okay that's why it's crashing that's why it's not working so you need to make sure that you cut out this equals new font part okay and put it let's terminate that of course and put it somewhere in the constructor for example okay this is where we instantiate everything and we do that for a reason not just for fun okay so I'm gonna put it right here font font equals new font okay will the game class have a font probably not okay but we're testing fonts at this uh, this point in time so yep okay great so now that that's out of the way let's try and render something okay well let's try and call the render method in font in the font class to render something we'll do it after we render uh, the level okay so font dot render screen will just be screen okay so that should now call this render method which in turn should render the sprite which should fill the appropriate pixels on our screen with the pixels in character okay in in the first character let's run that all right we get a crash right now uh, where is this in is this still in this is load okay see it's telling us that our sheet is null okay so let's go back to game let's scroll up to font okay let's bring this font down a bit okay just to about maybe after player all right and we'll run it okay this time we don't get the crash notice that okay that's probably because player is actually the first class to use a sprite sheet or a sprite okay that's why everything gets instantiated okay so I think if we put this above player we'll probably get the crash no we won't okay let's try a bit higher all right there we go so we have to do it after level okay because level dot spawn instantiates that stuff um honestly I'm just gonna put it probably all the way after player okay that seemed to work pretty well so um where is our font what did I just do where I move there let's put font below player all right terminate yes let's run that okay we get plus weird isn't it right we just when we the first character that should be zero right and if we bring up plus uh so if we bring up our uh, uh character map here I guess font shape uh, we've got the plus as the last one, so what, what's going on? Like, maybe maybe it's reversed. Let's just try something like characters 2, okay? Whoa, that's the same plus sign. What is going on, okay? And I, by the way, I know exactly what's going on. I'm just kind of trying to show you guys what's actually going on. Okay, so that means that all of these are equal, right? What if I try 50 or 69? I don't know. I swear that was an accident, by the way. Um, I wasn't looking at my keyboard. Um, so we've got plus as well, okay? What's going on here? Well, uh, one way to actually check to see if this is actually accurate. Let's, let's just print out the, um, whoops, let's just print out the actual characters array. Okay, well, actually, that would be stupid. Uh, let's actually print out the, um, the hash code, okay, for that. So if we print this out, uh, we're getting, what is that? 48, okay, well, 48, 54, whatever. Let's change this. Oh, look, it is different, right? 35, so it is, it's an actual different sprite. All these are different sprites. But for some reason, they're the same value, okay? And this is one of those errors where if you don't know Java and you don't know low-level kind of Java, you will have no idea what's going on, okay? You will have zero idea what's going on, okay? But luckily, I do know what's going on because otherwise this would be an interesting problem to solve, okay? Um, it has to do with how Java passes arrays basically through uh, certain parameters, okay? So if we go to sprite share, uh, sorry, if we go to, sp if, where's our sprite class gone? Okay, if basically, let's just go to font. Okay, if you control click on sprite.split, it will take you to that method. Let's take a look at this, and this is very subtle, okay, this error. Um, what happens here is we, we, we create the new pixels array, yeah? What we do is we then, um, you know, we, we basically sort through every character in this, right? We grab the pixels from every character, in that uh, in that font sheet, and we extract every pixel of that character over here, right? And we actually put it into this pixel array, and then we pass the pixel array through the parameter here. We pass it into the constructor for new sprite, so that it actually creates the new sprite based on those pixels with the width and height, of course, of the character, um, and it puts that into this uh, sprites array, and then it increments the current uh, variable here, so that the next time it does it, it puts it onto the next sprite in the array. Um, that looks fine, right? If we go back to the, and what happens is, of course, we get to the end of this, it goes back to the beginning of this loop over here, 
and it does it again and okay it's overriding the pixels and it's passing them into parameters so what's the issue here well we don't have pointers in java okay so what happens is and people are like well we don't have pointers so that means everything's like how, how does that mean okay we do have pointers in java okay we can't just we actually can't define them they're, they're there obviously otherwise otherwise basically this would be an unusable language um so what java does is it actually and this is a bit of a java tutorial honestly in a way but i really want you guys to get this what java does is it assumes pointers in some kind of case okay so values are sorry uh objects or well things let's just say things are passed by you know when we pass things in through a parameter like this okay there's two ways java treats that okay it is a it either passes it by value or it passes it by reference okay value means that it physically just passes in the value as if we just hit five okay so for example for integers for any kind of primitive data type strings all that stuff they are passed by value okay so it means if we create it in x we've set it equal to zero we pass in x through here um in the in the sprite constructor we'll have our own version of x okay we won't it won't have anything to do with this version it simply just grabs the value zero it passes in zero and then whatever we do in the in the constructor stays that way okay however objects and arrays or even arrays of primitive types like arrays of integers in this case our pixels array that stuff is passed by reference okay what does that mean passed by reference means that it doesn't actually kind of it doesn't copy it across it doesn't give it a different version it actually just links it okay it points to it so what happens is when we put pixels into here you can see in sprite we simply set this dot pixels equals pixels what we're doing is we're actually setting the memory address of our pixels equal to the same pixels that we pass in through the parameter okay over here so what happens is when we then go ahead and change that pixel uh array right which is what happens when we get to the end and we go ahead and we obviously reassign each of these pixels it actually changes in all of the instances of sprite so they all have the same pixels okay if you get really really kind of detective-y if that's even a word um and you pull out like something like visual vm or some kind of uh, java profiler and you check and you take a look at the memory usage you'll see that there's only one array of pixels okay for sprite there's not copies of the of it okay so what happens in 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 summary i guess is we're not actually making a copy of these pixels when we go ahead and overwrite them there's only one in, it's kind of like pixels is static in a way right that's probably the best way to, to describe it if you guys know what static means it's like pixels are static okay so when we put them into sprite and we go ahead back to it and we change them it changes the ones already in the sprites that we've created okay whereas we want each sprite to have its own set of pixels so what we need to do there is either force it to pass by value which is impossible because java does not have pointers so we can't not use pointers when because what it's doing here is basically using a pointer right it's passing by reference we want it to pass by value we can't do that okay this isn't c or c plus plus unfortunately um instead of what we can do is force it to copy okay so in sprite what we essentially need to do is instead of setting pixels equal to pixels we actually need to copy across each individual integer into this pixel array okay we could do that using a for loop okay and i'll show you guys how that would look like i is less than uh pixels dot length okay i plus plus we have to make sure that we actually create this dot pixels equals uh, new int, and then of course it would just be width times height. Or in this case, we could literally just say pixels at length. Um, uh, and then what we what what we would have to do here is just simply set this dot pixels i equals to pixels i. All right, let's get rid of that last statement. Okay, so what we're doing here is we're copying each individual integer across. Okay, so if we do run that, let's go back to font, set this back to zero. Let's run it. Look at that. We get the letter A now. Okay. If I change this to one, we should get two. Uh, sorry, B. And we do get B. Okay. So you can see that this error is pretty subtle. Okay. Uh, that's one way to do it. We could do a copy using this. The other way, which you could use, is something called System Array Copy. Okay. So the source. Basically, I'll show you guys how to how to do it this way in case you want to, because it is one line of code instead of three. But um. 
uh, basically the source, right? This is what you're copying from. So just pixels being the parameter pixels. The position zero, because you want to start it from the start. The destination being the pixels that we're copying into. So this dot pixels, the destination position, we want, it, we want it to start pasting basically at zero. And then the length, of course, pixels dot length, okay? And if I get rid of that for a second and run this, you'll see that we get the exact same result. B still shows up and not plus, okay? Whereas what we had before was this dot pixels equals pixels um, like that. All right, and if we run that, we'll get that plus again. All right, so you can see that that's a very subtle error. A lot of you probably would not have picked up on that. Um, it, it didn't take me very long to pick up on it, luckily, because I could imagine spending hours on this. It took me about, I don't know, literally about 10 seconds to realize. Once I looked at the sprite sheet and I saw that it was the last one, if plus had been the first one, or somewhere in the middle, it probably wouldn't have come to me that quickly, but I saw the plus was the last one and I was like, yeah, they're, they're all the same, basically. So very, very subtle error. This is why it's important to know Java um, when you're making games. I'm actually not going to use the system right copy method. This probably looks a bit more clear because I am trying to make this uh, programming series as simple as I can. Um, but yeah, that's what we need to do. Okay, basically that's, yeah. So make sure that you do that. Make that amendment. There's nothing wrong with the actual split method. It's just the way that we, the way that we pass this in. Okay, the way that Sprite handles incoming pixels. Okay. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, next episode, we'll take a look at drawing stuff onto this, uh, at, at actually being able to pass in a string, such as, you know, hello, and being able to pick out which characters we want for that and render them onto the screen. Okay, I'll try and make the, the, ne the, the next episode this week as well, but I can't promise anything. Uh, but it is nearing the end of the semester, so there'll definitely be more episodes in the future, and that Flappy Bird series will start eventually, don't worry. Um, I've just barely got enough time to, to handle this. But anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, one thing I really want you guys to do as well is if you just didn't understand all this pass by point, uh, pass by reference stuff, feel free to leave a comment below, right? That's always a good place to do it. Or you can obviously go to the forums, okay? Uh, and if you go to the forums, okay, which of course is the channel.com forward slash forums, if you just go to the channel.com, there'll be a forums tab. Make sure you log in or register first. Uh, in the game programming, you guys can make, um, uh, a post about about that. Now, this isn't exactly about game programming, okay? So what I might do right now, actually, as soon as I end this video, is make a section here just for Java, for languages, like for Java and C++, and so that you guys can post related um, questions onto there, okay? Because this isn't really related to game programming, it's more related to how the language works, okay? We wouldn't have to do that, we wouldn't have to do that in C++, because by C++, in C++, since we have pointers, everything is passed by value, by default, and then if we want to pass it by reference, we have to uh, specify that explicitly, okay? Whereas Java assumes things because, well, we can't use pointers, unfortunately. Um, that's the idea, okay? So make sure that you guys um, understand that. I don't think there'll be much more of that in the future in this series in terms of having to know really detailed things like that. But um, yeah, you can see here it, it came in handy. Uh, so yeah, go ahead and make a post on the forums if you guys are having trouble with anything really um i do offer tutoring okay uh basically well for the people who've had it they say it's really good um but the idea is uh if you guys want me to teach you privately like basically like this video but what you actually want to learn then you can go ahead and fill out uh this form over here uh pick the duration and stuff of the tutorial pick a time where i'm available which is <laughs> Not much, uh, but, um, and then just, just go ahead and submit, all right? So pretty simple. Um, and the idea is it's kind of like, a lot of people ask what they're like. Uh, I don't want to really explain that too much in this video, but essentially I add you on Skype, uh, I call you, I use TeamViewer so that you can see my screen, and then it's like I'm doing a tutorial, but specifically for you. You guys go ahead and, inter you know, everyone goes ahead and interrupts me ask questions, I answer them, we just have a good time, really, honestly, they're fun for both parties. I have a lot of fun doing it, and um, everyone really enjoys them, so if you guys do want to seriously uh, learn game development or programming, even if you guys don't know Java yet, or whatever, I don't know why you'd be watching episode 109 if you don't know Java, but, um, I or, or if you don't know C++ and you want to kind of transition, maybe you want to bring the game programming over, the game programming series over into C++, this is, of course, one of the many things that I can teach you. All right, anyway, I'll catch you guys soon. Be sure to hit the like button if you enjoyed the video and later.